Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to exercise our legs, try to get some intense work done. Straight away I am going to start with the greatest stretch, 5 repetitions on each side. Now if you do experience any kind of tightness in your calf muscles, hamstrings, your hips, make sure you add additional dynamic stretches to your routine. Spend those couple of minutes before starting the workout because as we do intense workouts it is very much important that our body is dynamically ready for all the workouts we are going to put it through i have been doing hip openers this particular the greatest stretch is also a good stretch also deep squat calf stretches are good way to begin before a intense leg workout so post completing my greatest stretch i move on to my deep squat make sure you go into the deep squat by hinging forward with a hamstring stretch by pushing your glutes as far behind as possible and then bending your knees to sit in a deep squat for more than few seconds. While you're sitting here, if you feel any kind of tightness in your calf muscles, that's an indication that you need to massage them to relieve some tension. So for the first exercise, I'm going to start off with hip thrust. Yes, finally, we are going to do this particular exercise. Not very or not a big fan of it but yes one of the prime exercises to ensure glute growth now to start off with i started with some 20 repetitions of warm-up just to ensure proper blood flow positioning figuring out the right way so that my quads are less involved and more work is done by my glutes and my hamstrings you can do the same if you, it's a very simple setup you basically rest your back on a bench then take a bar, put it on your hips, especially with a foam padding or if you don't have a foam padding, you can use a yoga mat to put it under it. It is initially a little bit uncomfortable. You need to work around it to get the position right, especially if the bar is heavier, like I have taken a 50 kilograms. It's not much uh, of weight. I have seen people do way more than this. But to start off with, it would demand a lot of, uh, I would say, positioning work so that it doesn't the bar doesn't pinch you at your hips. Now, the exercise is pretty simple. Once you have placed your legs in a comfortable position and lifted the bar off the ground, you simply start thrusting up using your glute muscles. Now, make sure you use your glute muscles alone. If you feel a lot of quad activation, Try to move your legs a little bit wider or a little bit closer towards you to see the perfect position for yourself. For me, this particular position was perfect and I was feeling the maximum amount of glute work done. Now, each set, I have done 20 repetitions as heavy as possible and 50 kilos was the heaviest I could control or manage with the bar pinching me down. But I tried to go as much as possible. Now, post completing my hip thrust for three sets, I moved on to seated hamstring curls. Now, I have done four sets of these. In each set, I have started with first 10 repetitions wherein my toes are facing or pointing each other. My big toe is touching. My Both my big toes are touching each other. I have done 10 repetitions. And once completing these 10 repetitions, I opened my feet, basically my toes facing outwards and I tried to get as many repetitions as possible. Now here you might need one extra set to figure out the right weight for you to see which weight would be challenging enough to achieve those 10 repetitions. It shouldn't be too light that your failure set doesn't actually hit failure or it shouldn't be too heavy that you're only able to achieve two or three repetitions. The target should be to achieve a minimum of six repetitions in the toes facing outwards position of your legs. So I've done four sets. As you can see, my toes touching each other. I started doing 10 repetitions. Tried to push the weight as much as possible. Post completing the hip thrust, this particular exercise is going to be a bit challenging. You would feel a lot of tension building up in your glutes, especially because hip thrust works a lot of glute work. Hamstrings, yes, they are working, but your glutes start hurting pretty quickly. And opening your toes, or opening, keep getting an open stance with your toes facing outwards pushes those hamstrings a little bit over and above the edge. 
Once done with those, I moved on to hip extensions, three sets, 20 repetitions with 45 seconds break in between. Now, in if you don't have this particular equipment, I'm not really sure if a flat bench hip extension would work fine. But if you have this equipment, please do do this. Now, make sure the cushioning of the hip extension machine is just under your hips. Basically, if you're wearing a track pant, the cushioning should be just under the elastic of the track pants. So your entire leg part is well rested and your toes should be pointing outwards. So the feet where you're resting on the machine, unfortunately, I did not shoot that particular angle, but my toes were facing outwards as wide stance as possible to feel my hamstrings and glutes as much as possible. You need not overextend, never push yourself beyond straight and try to reimagine yourself wherein you're doing a reverse RDL. Basically, you want your upper body to go down as straight as possible, stretching your hamstrings and glutes. And as you come up, you want to squeeze your glutes as hard as possible to get yourself up in a straight manner. Now that works up your hamstrings and glutes again. Three, three exercises for these both muscles and you should be totally fried by end of it. I was definitely done. I couldn't move my leg after completing this particular exercise. Now we move on to our next phase of training wherein we start training our quad muscles. Now one equipment I dearly miss is a hack squat machine because it's quite helpful when you're pushing this kind of intensity on a leg day. But yes, uh, this is part of the routine. It's just that I, if I had a leg hack squat machine, I would have used that too. But for on the leg press machine, we're going to do three sets, 20 repetitions with 60 seconds break in between. Now make sure that you place your legs at a narrow stance, really close, just under yourself or really low on the resting plate. And also the stance should be narrow so that your quads are more at focus. Yes, your hamstrings and glutes are going to still work because the amount of work we have put them through, they're still going to get activated. But taking a narrow stance and placing your foot on the lower end of the uh, resting plate helps you focus more on your quad muscles. I have done three sets of these. Your legs would be a bit tight while performing this exercise. So try to go as low as possible. I was going as low as the equipment was allowing me to do so. Now, if you feel any bit of discomfort in your knees, make sure you take your feet resting height a little bit higher because I don't want you to, you know, exaggerate the amount of stresses on your knee. So if you feel uncomfortable, increase or basically place your feet a little bit higher. But if you're comfortable, place them as low as possible. Take one set, figure out the position, do 10 to 15 repetitions in a slow and steady manner, and then jump into your working sets if you're doing this for the first time. But if you have healthy knees and you're absolutely fine with it, go ahead and start repping out. Now, post completing the leg presses, I moved on to walking lunges. Last time I wasn't able to do the walking lunges because the gym was quite busy. This time I had enough space. Now you have to do 40 steps of walking lunges. Take two to three sets to finish it off. The manner in which I have done is taking a very short stance and also not completely getting up as you can see in the video. Post completing my walking lunges, I moved on to my knee extensions, wherein I have done four sets, 15 repetitions, plus using the pause and rest technique, I added another 20 repetitions like rest for four seconds, do five more reps, rest for another four seconds, do another five more reps. In similar manner, add up at least 20 repetitions. So in total, I was able to achieve 35 repetitions per set. Now, for the first 15 repetitions, I kept the weight same. I did not change the weight. But once I was done with the 15 repetitions, I racked up three times the weight, which I was moving and got five repetitions. So extremely heavy weight, but only for five repetitions. Now, I have chosen to go three times heavier, but it's absolutely your choice to go two times heavier or maybe just 1.5 times heavier. Just make sure you switch the weight up for the five repetitions, which we are going to do using the 
pause and rest technique. For the first 15 repetitions, take a weight where you can rep out 15 repetitions at a challenging manner. Once done, put as heavy as uh, possible and start getting those five repetitions, extra five repetitions and rack up another 20 repetitions out of it. And once done, your legs should absolutely be fried. But here is what, if you do have a hack squat machine, please go and do a 20 repetition, two set hack squats, uh, hack squat squats. Basically, again, narrow stance, focusing more on your quad muscles. It will really finish off the day well. I really miss that machine. Now, post completing my knee extensions or leg extensions, I rested for a couple of minutes because I wasn't able to move my legs even for the static stretching part. But yes, we are going to finish off with the static stretching, simple hamstring stretch and quad stretch to finish off with. Thank you so much for joining me again. If you did like the workout, the brutal leg workout, please do drop a like. If you have any kind of feedback, please do drop a comment. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because the transformation is near. I can feel it. I'm feeling stronger, looking better. So we're going to keep on getting the game higher and start learning new things together. Make sure you always stretch for at least 15 to 20 seconds every muscle which you have worked on to ensure that you stretch that muscle into its neutral length. Just flip the camera a little bit to make sure that you can see me properly. But yes, again, thank you so much for joining me. If you do feel any kind of discomfort post-workout, make sure you do a lot of foam rolling and hand massaging or if you have a massage gun, use that to relieve tension. That would relieve a lot of tension. Otherwise, good sleep and nutrition would get you back. On that note, I wish you a good recovery and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.